keeps going. Keeps going. He don't know whether he's washing his face or his hair. <laughs> he don't know if to use soap, soap or shampoo. <laughs> We're not taking Monday Club to be taking the piss out of my art club. Welcome to the Electrician's Guide to Everything Monday Club. In, to, in the house today, we have Nick Bundy from Wait. Nick Bundy Electrical YouTube channel. He oh, thinks he's hard, but he's not. Uh, no, I was, I was just thinking, um, Rick's not here today. Um, he's got family things. So, uh, yeah, he'll be on next week. Yeah. Yep. I hope his song gets better. Um, yes. What's the going on, chaps? Nick, as a... What's, are you our first official guest? He's the first guest, isn't he? No, second. Spencer. Spencer. Second, Spencer. The last one didn't turn up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, have you have you been keeping up to date, or have you done the embarrassing thing of trying to watch as many as possible before you come on? No, no, no. I've been watching them. I even, I even messaged Sam I spoke to Sam the other day and said, uh, I've, been, I've been enjoying it. I've, li- I've listened to Sam and Rick for the past year mumble and waffle on and swear occasionally and talk about uh, Would You Rather games. Um, the new... Uh, the new format, it's like, I'm am hooked. And I said to Sam, it, there's something different about it. It's enjoyable. You know, you've actually got two people that know what they're on about now. Um, and then Sam's still there for comical value in the corner. So, yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I can't argue that. Do you know, <laughs> do you know what I... There is something I want to address this week, actually, is yeah. um, the comments. I'm just trying to find them now. Is the comments in... Uh, I'm going to call this segment <laughs> Triggered Sam segment. And it's the comments in the Monday Club, which I find on YouTube. incredibly rude. Incredibly rude. I've have, applied to a few ever... before. Come on as well. <laughs> Has everyone <laughs> seen these comments? I've seen a few of them. You talk about on YouTube, yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah, I could. Well, they're lying me. I'm not seeing them. Well, okay, that, um... oh, God, where are they now? Well prepared. Brilliant. This is what happens when you turn up late, oh, look, Sam. Tony yeah. Clark. Right, hello Tony. Hey, Shout Clark. out to you, mate. Hey, Tony, Tony Clark. He must have cut his hair with that knife. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It is an awful haircut. Mm. What was the other one? Oh, Track ID. Whoever that may be. Shout out to Track ID. Interesting podcast. To the chap who wants to lose weight by biking five miles. You're wasting your time. Try a low co- lo- try a low carb diet. <laughs> what? Wait, did he put a compliment? Tip. Did he put a compliment there as well? Like great, great podcast good chaps. content. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't remember asking for these, like, for this advice. But I'm, you know, I'm great. Want to see the comments see I you. get? Christ. Do you get some? Do you get some uh, dark ones, dear? Yeah. yeah. Do ya? Go on. Let's have, let's have an example. Come on, examples. Oh. Alex I employees. This, this, this year, no, there isn't any. Um, I had a guy <clears throat> middle lockdown. He messaged me and said, "Bundy, this is shit. Go kill yourself." <laughs> nice. Oh, it's because I kept doing tool bag reviews. I was like, uh, "I'll stop doing them now." Fair enough. <laughs> now I get them every now and then. You, did you see the video when uh, when I did the summer house with Adam the other week? And uh, we can swear on this, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, he messaged me and said, uh, I bet when you guys are done with the tools, you go and sit in the van and you'll wank each other off. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and someone else keeps messaging me and every every other video, they keep saying, I bet your hat stinks. Sam can't believe you're reading all his messages. Do you know what? I think it's actually comedy gold. So keep them coming. Keep them coming. Let's have let's have this segment for all all involved, and we call it triggered. Thing is, it's it's um it's it's week one of apprenticeship training. It learn to take a, a good idea verbally on site. Yeah, for sure. If you if you can't listen, you have to you have to sort of have a bit of a thick skin on a building site, you know, or mm. in in a trade. If you're, if you're going to be like really sensitive, <clears throat> like Rick, um, you're just going to have to suck it up, I think. 
I still can't yeah, believe it. I still can't believe how tricky gets over an electrician of the year. <sighs> no, no, no. It's not that. Oh, I, the, yeah, you lot winding them up the other day. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. but do you know what it is? Do you know what it is, right? It's, I like to say this to him, like I say to Neil, I plucked you from obscurity and made you famous. You're welcome. And <laughs> it drives him insane. <laughs> it does, it absolutely it to... does. I'm, doing it. It's like, <laughs> I'm starting to doubt if he ever actually had an apprenticeship. Because you, you, you can't be that soft and never an apprenticeship. Yeah, but you know what Rick's like? He's, always, he's one of them people that are annoyingly always right and quite principled. <laughs> like, he'll, he'll have a joke, but... Yeah, there's some, some things that will trigger him good and proper. So I like to say it. I'll tell you one thing, probably dent his ego. When we went, you know, when he won that award, well, I was yeah. there, wasn't I? You said yeah. Day, day, yeah. Well, yeah. He was obviously against Jamie Beck and, and Dave Osavo, and I went with them as a guest to sort of, you know, I had no idea what I was going to do, to be honest. And then Rick won, and he come down, and he was like, all right, gents, you're all right. And the first of all, I was like, why is he speaking funny? So I've never heard him speak before. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. He shook me on his whole blundy. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. I was like, yep. <laughs> don't know who you are. And obviously afterwards, then Dave and, and Jamie filled me in. I was like, ah. And that's when I obviously realised who he was. But Speaking of Dave I, Osavo, yeah. I had an embarrassing moment. I'd, say, and I'd, just, I'd have a moment where I'd actually just stop for me and thought, yeah, what the fuck am I doing, right? I Hold on, I'll, stop, stop, stop. I just need to address something. What? Why are you wearing the same T-shirt as you wore last week, bruv? Oh, have you no. only got one clothes or you got 50 yeah, of them T-shirts? I, 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 I'm a nightmare at that. I buy new clothes, I'm like, that goes to the top of my old drawer every time. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, yeah, Mark's wearing his PE kit and you're wearing the same... PE kit? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Last week I was having an allergic reaction. This week I'm doing PE. Neil's, Neil's only got one shirt that fits him, bruv. <laughs> 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 right, Sorry, I go back to my Dave Osama story with a little yeah, bit of reality check. So I'm in the kitchen, I've got YouTube on, and I'm watching one of his videos. And the missus walked in, and she's just looked at the TV, looked at me, and gone, What the hell are you watching? As Dave Osavo sitting there with topless <laughs> in a yeah. cartoon hot tub, giving tips on how to do the regulations for hot tubs. <laughs> 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 and all of a sudden, I'm like going, what am I doing? What am I watching? <laughs> My just walked in on that one and I couldn't believe it. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. Absolute yeah. gold. But Have you like... seen the one where he, he does the radio and he's doing all the dance moves at the end for like five minutes straight and in the end he takes his top off with disco lights in his office. It's absolutely amazing. He's, he's comedy gold. He is yeah. like, oh. someone should give him like, Nick's too young to remember this, probably like the Harry Enfield show or the Far show. Someone should give him a, a script like that. Please well, tell like me you know what that is. I know Harry Enfield. I don't know the other one. Yeah, you don't know the Far Show. Time. What the Far? How can it be before your time when I was watching oh, the Far Show? Yeah, far but show, that... I'm after Harry Enfield. The far Show was a little bit late, wasn't it? So yeah, really parents let you stay up. Like Spitting Image, that was also late. Yeah. Only the cool kids watch Spitting Image. Well, now it's the old kids. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, well, I'll tell you what I've had on my list I want to talk about. I've had, oh, it's a prime opportunity, actually, because, um, <clears throat> because Bundy's here with an arm full of ink. Work pl- tattoos in the workplace. What are people's thoughts on tattoos in the workplace? In today's um, era? I, I, I don't think it's a problem. Tattoos I on the face? Yeah, no, no, that's an issue. Hmm. I, my, my dad was obviously in the trades as well, and when I grew up, he was always as, as, so anti-tattoos, piercings, all that sort of stuff. So I wasn't like, he did say to me that when you don't do this out, you don't get any. So I just got them where he couldn't see them. <laughs> Obviously not on my balls or anything like that. I mean, like under my arm, <laughs> under my ribs, doing all that sort of stuff. And then the end, I ended up showing him and he was just, didn't speak to me for a week. Um, but then obviously I said I wanted to get a sleeve and it was a big no-no. You, you know, you're self-employed, you're young, you don't give off good image with all the old, because I worked for loads of old people. And uh, I was... I'm on the the verge of getting that done. Oh no! Yeah, get the hand on. Um, but you would not do that. That uh, I know. Everyone keeps saying to me, "Don't." Do you then... know why not? Because it's a trend at the moment. Same as sleeves were a trend. Like everyone got sleeves back in the day, and then like some people were getting them now, but it's not as common. And then the hand thing is like a trend. Now, say you, 
say you go out for dinner. Like, I'm just saying, I always think of it like this. You go out for dinner, you can wear a nice shirt. You go to a nice restaurant, you wear a nice shirt. But it covers up your toes. But if you've got them on your hands, you're still, you're still going to... You can't really cover them up. You're not going to wear gloves to dinner, are you? Like, somewhere posh. No, that, that's a thing, but it's just, it does limit your posh, options a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's always a big discussion. Like, I, I'm not set on it. I want to. And believe it or not, Neil, I was going to do a, something on Instagram about this because... I was talking to Adam about it. Adam doesn't have it. Copying us. Obviously Stop copying us. Uh, 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 be very careful. And um, yeah, and he, he's not interested in you know, His dad's not gone. And it's just one of the things. It is a bit of a fad thing, but normally I would say you can't improve in perfection, but you can add to it. Do you know what I'm saying? Jeez. You wouldn't know anything about that, Sam. Listen, you're the only person here that wears a beret and calls it hair. Very. <laughs> Scout. <laughs> you, you look like you're a cadet or something walking around. Listen, why are you I still can't get past sleeves? Mark's PE top. I can't get past it. Oh, right, right. This is Primark's <laughs> finest. It's Primark's finest, this one. It was about two quid on special offer. Was it, I, was it a I'm size too small? Would not you... this one, uh... <laughs> is it, no. It's a size one. too small, bro. <laughs> I haven't it's, seen that it's, since. It's, it's... <laughs> all, what was it under? Wishful thinking. Is that the brand? Yeah, I'm going to fit in it all one day. <laughs> how, how the fattest person in the room can be cussing you for wearing tight clothes? Uh, even double XL was tight. Hey, you've man. been out. You've yeah. been out on your bike again tonight. You're keeping. Yes, out I it. have. Credit to uh, you. Yeah, done another five miles. But listen, let's get this straight. If we want to address this five mile thing, yeah, I do it maybe four nights a week. But on a Saturday morning, I do ten miles. Well, I've done it one week, but that is my game. I want to do. I want to do like. I don't know, 20, 30 miles a week. That's what I'm aiming for. Just on the bike. Where'd you ride to? The donut shop? Um, your mum's house. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh we've turned well, into 12-year-olds. We? We've turned into 12-year-olds from the 90s. <laughs> oh, <brilliant>. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, can we, can we talk about something uh, electrical instead of just... It takes yes. the heat off your let's, stupid let's comment. Let's do it. <laughs> no, do you know what? That's not a stupid comment. I think it's a perfectly good one. Um, so today Another I posed a question. episode. The one we can't release. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got I got bogged down today and talk about the the eighteenth edition and the amendment two, and you put out something today about um, who's you? Hey, who who you talked to? You, Neil. Sorry. All right, Mister Longface. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lord Longhead. <laughs> Lord Longhead put out something today mil, about. <clears throat> AFDs, AFDDs being, um, go on, you tell us what you put out today and I'll pose my question. So today, um, so we are recording this on the 21st, uh, of? the draft 21st of well, September still, yeah, September, yeah. <laughs> this year's just, just disappeared. <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> We're still in lockdown. Uh, the draft for public comment on Amendment 2 was released. Anyone, anyone managed to have a look at it today apart from me or? Skimmed it very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, it was painful. Yeah, I skimmed it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so painful because I don't know if you the internet was just crap. I think their site was struggling with the amount of people trying to view it. But basically, okay. the only thing I can see in there that's going to really change things is I think there's some new issues with SPDs. I couldn't even work out what the issues were with SPDs and AFDDs. So they're talking about mandating. So before it was, if we all remember, before it was to be considered which basically means ignore. Um, mm. Now it's mandated for all circuits of 32 amps and under. Single phase circuits. Really? Mandated. So it must be installed. Um, um, with some exceptions. We... There's some exceptions of some specific machinery and um, life-saving <laughs> systems. So you, uh, emergency lighting, fire alarm supplies, and lighting in a domestic setting. So if you, if you talk about... A, a domestic consumer, dwelling whatever if you talk about a consumer unit change in a normal say what seven or eight circuit cu you're now going to have to take that into double triple the cost yeah easily but easily. yeah I probably just at least pose my question because I feel, I feel like it's important for those that don't know this probably every electrician does apart from me but we're talking at lunchtime about it and the guy I'm working with, he goes, well, I've done, as a favour, I helped my sister rewire my sister's house. Um, and they've already bought the board. 
but it's going to be a long while before I go in there and finish it up and give them a certificate. Does does that mean I can't give them a certificate on that board? On the they, old board? If they bring out, if the amendment comes out with mandating AFDDs, can you can you sign it off? They give you a certain period of time, don't they, with um, with your design. So if you've designed it to an older version of the regulations, there is a window upon the change of regulations where you can still install to that design. So as long as you're doing it in a reasonable time frame, I don't think you'll have an issue. What do you think is a reasonable time frame? I think they do actually specify, don't they? I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. Is it, is it roughly 12 months? Cat here, Neil. No. You've gone, mate. Oh, mate. This geezer. No. 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 Oh, it's oh he's such an amateur, isn't he? Oh, no. How embarrassing. Anyway, until Neil sorts himself out, he's out of the conversation. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I, th- I thought that was quite an interesting question because there'd be people out there that don't know the answer to that. Yeah, of course there is. You think the regs change and that's it. You've instantly got to start installing to those regs on the day they come into force. But certainly... Andy, did when you it... know that? What's that? Did you know about this design thing? See? I think... oh, no, no. I, I knew you've got a you know, six to 12 months. I'm pretty sure it was 12 months because I found this when I spec'd a, a new build. A guy was having plan permission. Took it too long to get through, but we'd already priced up, spec'd out all, all the stuff he wanted. And this was roughly the same time that the... Uh, metal fuel sports came into array in the same time frame. I put a new metal one in anyway. He was like, yeah. But when we spoke to uh, Bill and Control, they said because it was spec beforehand, it could be it'd be the, the old plastic one. So I think it's roughly the same thing. If it's still spec'd off it within a 12-month period, it should be fine. Yeah, you can see where the main contractors are going to have a big problem, aren't they, if they're doing like hundreds of thousands of houses on the combined electrical design company. It's not going to be something you can change just because a reg, a reg book's changing. They need a bit of period of time for manufacturers to get up to date as well. So, so when's, when's sure. this coming into force then? That's what I was going to ask Neil, because I haven't actually seen that. I think it's 2022. Is that right, Neil? You can hear me? Nod your head. 20, 2022. So it's a while off yet then, the amendment to. Yeah, I think you get till December sometime for we can all put in um, our feedback on the uh, suggestions that have been made and then whether they make it into the final copy or not is decided mm-hmm. after that after that point. So they're not actually set in stone for what they're going to be now. This is just a draft that's been published for people to comment on. So if you, if you read it and you think that there's changes that could be made and might maybe well should be made, then you can get that feedback back into the, the system and um, see if they listen. But my, my issue with it, because obviously each AFDD is a sing, singular module that covers one circuit, correct? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the manufacturer. Some of them are double module and some um, with Hager, as Neil's found out, they actually take up three ways in a board because they don't mm. have RCBO protection in the device. How, how are we going to fit when there's limited space for a 10-way board and you've already got an SPD and you've got your main isolator? And then you've got nine circuits, but obviously you always want to leave with a new board change. You want to leave three or four, if you can, three for the future. Then, I mean, you're talking a fuse board, a 10-way fuse board going from that big to, to this big. With what about the double-decker on ones? Even still, it's very limited to space. The amount of boards I change, the, the access is, is minimal most of the time. If you see the boards in, they use in Europe, they tend to have them um, double pole. Um, yeah. MCBs anyway so their boards are typically going to be three rows deep yeah. so I, I think we might be moving towards that possibly uh, where we just redesign entirely the way a consumer unit looks and functions <laughs> whether people are prepared to pay it I mean certainly in the domestic area it's a hard sell at the minute with RCBOs never mind yeah. AFDDs so it, it, that's the consideration as well how many people are just going to not bother upgrading to even have RCDs because yeah. the cost is prohibitive we need to understand especially the way things are at the minute with people losing the jobs and the yeah. Go pandemic. On, hold on. Go on. He's back. Hello. Yeah, yeah. We can hear yeah, yeah. you. Bit quiet, I think. That should be right now. It's a bit quiet. Do you Is find it? that, Nick, when you're trying to um, convince a customer to have a new consume unit that even the RCBO is a hard sell most well, often? To be honest with you, I would probably say the last 10 to 15 boards I've not even given them a choice. Um, it's always just been RCBO. I think as the regs stand, I mean, I, I, I got someone messaging me on YouTube, and it was from Telford, which is like the next town long from me. 
and he had his NIC assessment and he flagged up the, the assessor that he was fitting split low boards and saying to the regs it should be RCBA boards future proofing for not selectivity what's the word Selectivity. Yeah, selectivity. It is selectivity. Yeah, yeah, selectivity between circuits. And and ever since I started YouTube, and obviously when I, I, I did a couple of Hager RCBO boards, but then obviously it cost an absolute arm and a leg. I obviously started fitting the fuse box ones, the price difference between the two. It would made it it made it so much easier for me to go, yes, I will do it as standard package. You have an RCBO board. I will not fit anything else. I've had a few customers saying I bought my own board. Uh, I read a BG one the other day, but it was a garage board. So, and it was quite a nice board, really. It was uh, one of the metal um, sealed ones. It was sturdy. I, I, even Adam looked at it, and we both looked at it and thought, that's nice. Um, but as it stands, I won't really fit split low boards as is now. So I don't, there's, no, there's no real hard sale anymore. I'm on the same page of that. I don't think they ever complied split low boards because the regulation says it needs to minimise disruption I don't think that is classed as minimising it's sort of a halfway house between complying and not complying yeah it's the same as back in the day when someone's board wasn't compliant they'd stick a massive RCD in front of the board and go there you go then yeah great so, Sam doesn't know what we're on about it's fine no I'm struggling no I'm joking um <laughs> What is the price differential between um, the RCBO board, like your standard RCBO board and the RCD board? I went off Hager, to my knowledge. I used to buy split load Hager was 100 quid all in, I think. Don't quote me on this. RCBO board, you, you've reached on 200 quid. So it's doubled the price. Pretty much. Yeah. Do you, what do you think? Is there a necessity for AFDD? Is this is this a, a manufacturer thing that they're, they're forcing in, or do you think it's actually worth having AFDDs? I think there's a benefit. I, yeah, yeah, I've had this... one customer, one customer <clears throat> asked for them, and I did. I don't ask. I don't willy nilly, but they had the hell scared out of them from Grenfell because obviously loads of my customers, for some reason or another, they found out that. If there was an AFDD, that Grenfell fire happened because there was a, a short between the washing machine. This is what the old lady told me, and she was like, well, I want an AFDD fit. She really looked into it, but she, she already had a Hager board, and the Hager didn't make them. They still don't make them. I can't get hold of them. Yeah, I've got so a Hager this, one. This was, uh, oh, you have? Yeah, I've got some. What's some over there? Yeah, I've got some. I'm just making, I'm changing the boards in my house, but it's just two 20-way split, <laughs> two boards I'm going to need just to do my house. Mm. Two 20-way splits. So it's not get, an optimal solution yet. You have to get RCBOs as well, aren't you, though, Neil? Because they don't yeah. do it in one device. Yeah, so I've got to have an RCB. So what the way I'm going to do it is going to have I'm going to have every single circuit on a 40 amp RCBO to give me my RCD protection with a six mil single going to the AFDD to then downfuse the AFDD to the appropriate size, six amp, 32 amp, or or 16 or whatever, with the outgoing cables from the AFDD. It's a bit of a a bit of a yeah. rigmarole, to be honest. I don't, it is a I don't, faff. <laughs> I don't think they should have bring the, brought this in yet until because obviously this technology has been created over the past three years as such. Obviously, every year it gets more and better into this. They should mention it now, get the feedback, and then in another three years when they've, like many RCBOs, they, they miniaturized it. So it's either a two, one or two pole um, device that can then have an RCBO built in and then go, right, we want you to fit them now. It makes sense because we can still put them in, you know, a 14 way board in domestic dwelling where it makes sense. The people that make these making these regulations up saying, "Oh, you're going to have this in in a domestic." Obviously, I haven't worked in someone's house and changed the board under the stairs or in a cupboard. Exactly. In an it's just crap. And then how are we going to code it? I mean, what are we saying in regards to coding? You know, are we rewire? Are we talking C twos? I mean, come on! It's like, I mean, we're talking. It's a real problem. If they kick this in, I think it's going to be a real problem. And uh, what I'm worried about is that you're going to have people now. Um, consumer unit replacements, distribution board upgrades are going to be beyond their reach of cost. Mm. So they're not going to get it done because they're going to go from a consumer unit being three, four, 500 quid in a domestic. I don't do domestic. I don't know. That's the ballpark figure. Say 500 quid for arguments, mate. Maybe going to 12, 50, 1500 quid. Is that, is that how much an, an AFDD board costs in? Like to spec out an AFDD, uh, AFDD board, for a domestic dwelling, what is the cost, Neil? Wait there, wait there, two seconds. Even with a Wilex single module one, so like 120 to 150 quid each. Eesh. So you don't need many circuits before you, you're over a grand. 
Oh yeah, uh, ten circuits, and yeah, you're that's ridiculous. You're, and the Hager, the Hager ones, are, I believe, are worse because you need the RCBO as well, and their price per unit, even just for the AFD D, is more, I believe. But Neil will probably tell us when he's back. I thought I had the receipt over there for the ones I bought, but I haven't. Um, so my ones were about £120 each, just for the AF- AFDD module. And so, then RC- um, RCBOs? 10 circuits, 1050 quid. RCBOs are about 26 28 quid each, Hager ones. So if you talk about 150 quid per circuit, 10 circuits, that's 1500 quid. That's without the consumer units. So, people, so like landlords who've got a couple of properties, that's an expensive upgrade, isn't it? Yeah. They just tell you to fuck off. <coughs> they, they, they're, 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 they're not going to do it in a million years. They're not going to do it. They're going, nah, I'll leave it. Joe, yeah, this is a, a, a topic, whether you want to go this on or now, with EICRs, because obviously I've done a few quite a lot recently. And Neil helped me out the other day on Twitter with that socket in the middle of the bloody... Literally, there was a, a, a draining board and a hob, and there was that much gap as work top. And there was just two sockets above when they're cooker isolation. Mm. And obviously I should have took more pictures, but there was no other worktop. The only other bit of worktop was left hand side of the sink, which was 340 mil I measured, which was below a boiler. So the boiler was next to the fucking sink as well. And there was no literally worktop. So I see 3D, it had the RCD <laughs> protection. I, there was, even if I wanted to turn around and say, no, I'm C2 in it, we've got to move it. There was nowhere physically to move it to. There was no other worktops. So anyone's put a kettle in. So anyway, doing a hell of a lot of them at the moment and i found what i ran gave the other day outside meat cupboard there's a fuse board in there and took the cover off the, the lid fell off as usual um it's only a c3 but that's that's the norm around my area you have so many with black bags taped around them and uh, took the board off and it was rust all over the buzz bar top of the mcbs uh it was absolutely caked in it um everything was tripping you know functional checks whatnot but the amount of rust I actually physically saw in it, I thought, well, it's not fit for purpose where it is. There's obviously moisture and dust in grass. I'm C2 in it. I want it moved inside. It was very easy to, we could have put an adaptable box, drill it straight through, low level in the lounge, happy days. And then we went further around, Adam and I were testing, metal lights, metal switches. There were CPCs, it was wiring singles, and there was obviously someone had run single earth to it at some point after. And one fitting had an earth and none of them else. They had an earth there, but there was... They were not connected to anything. Obviously, we weren't going to be picking floorboards up. So I failed it for the board outside, failed it for lack of uh, earthing on the um, metal <laughs> things, all that sort of stuff. And then around the land, uh, it was a work for a stage, around the stage, I told them. So I gave them a quote. I said, but move the board. as it has to be done. Uh, we'll upgrade it because it's a plastic one. I had, I think it was a 15th, uh, 16th edition, one RCD and none on the other side. And uh, I gave a quote for lightning rewire either quinetic or the other way and the guy went fucking mental thinking i was money grabbing at me honestly uh, <laughs> she rang he rang up effing and blind at the stage and scoring her every name with the sun she says we knew we'd get this because the guy's a bit of a prick anyway mm. but he went around the house last night and went he took all the sockets and lights off and, and says there's nerf and everything the guy's just being a twat trying to grab all my money and where do you stand like with it all because i said i've got the test results i cover my ass with it all i took pick the best thing with my uh, certificates now on my iPad I physically take pictures of everything and attach it to the bottom of the certificate mm. to prove you know there is an earth there it's not connected to anything it's wired in singles if you're going to change the board do the lights as well it's an empty property it's very easy and uh, yeah he just called me a fucking twat and a money grabber over the phone and said he's going to get someone else to do it I said as long as I get paid for the ICR I don't give a shit mate yeah he sounds like a sort of client you don't want to work for anyway to yeah. be fair and uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I mean, I'm getting quite a few of them at the moment because the same saying they're just thinking electricians are going out there trying to get the money. I was like, I'm testing it to the best of my ability. If there's something wrong, I will point it out because if mm. someone gets shocked afterwards, the blame comes on me, not the landlord. So why wouldn't I point it out? I have interest, Nick. Do you, do you uh, put recommendations on your reports as well? Yeah, so what I, I found quite interesting the other day when you said about the 100% of the ICRs as well. So I took that into consideration. I used to put 100% because... I physically all, checked 100% we all, everything. Yeah, we all have. But, yeah. you know, I do the functional checks. I've got the puffer for the smoke alarms, all that sort of stuff. But obviously, the internals of it, I can't test that if it's not working. Now, if it's something wor- isn't working, I'll just put C3 smoke alarm, needs replaced and out of date. But most of the time, I'll just say, strongly recommend we change the smoke alarms. If it's out of date, then it needs a new one. You've got tenants living there, blah, blah, blah. And 99% of landlords go, yeah, fine. I mean, I found some that are out of date from like, 2009 the other day. <laughs> so it was good um, 
but regards to going around and, and I don't know, it's a tough one really because I can do observations. When I go through my tick list and I put a C3, C2, it jumps across to my observations so it fills out itself. So if the mm. fuse wall is too high up and accessible, you just C3 in that box and it jumps across. But then afterwards I'll go in and break it down. If it's necessary, click on it and then I'll, because I'm crap at typing, I'll just dictate it and it writes it out for me. And uh, recommend this, this is the reason why. And to try and state why, because if the customer then wants to read through afterwards, if we talk in our language, like Sam probably doesn't understand what we're saying. No, it no, just he, goes over. Yeah, it just goes. He, over he the gets lost at Welcome to Monday Club. Yeah, it's it. <laughs> he starts looking at his feet. Oh, I've got two. Um, I was always um, told with reports. And this is one thing I've always kept. I've always kept the report as a report. I don't put recommendations on a report. I don't ever recommend work done on a report. Well, C C three is a recommendation though. So it's in my eyes, you've got to really explain why you think it's a recommendation. You can't just yeah, put C three start. <clears throat> Because the customer don't have fucking clue. No, well, this is the problem. This is, I suppose, this might be the nuances of working in domestic. I don't. I've always been taught a report should be a report on it because recommendations. There's, there could be multiple ways of skinning a cat, mm. can't there? You can solve a C one by putting a lock it off, lock it off the circuit. C one's gone. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's a final solution or the solution that the client want to go to. So I tend to produce a report and say that is your report. What what do you want done next? Yeah, see, I don't see the point in the FIs. I think that's a waste of time. Mm. I think I'd get another coffee. I'm so bored. Um, but go on, fuck off. We're having a Ricky. And um, (laughs) but for the domestic, if if I can't find the reason why or I need to further investigate, I can't, in my eyes, I can't complete the sheet and I can't say this house is safe or unsafe until I've physically found the answer for it. So, FI to me is not the best thing to have on the domestic. So, if you had an open ring. Would you keep yeah. searching until you found the calls for that open ring or would you just see I'd to probably, it? I'd probably spend a couple of hours on it. Yeah, see to it and recommend we drop it down to 20 amp and just split it to two radials. If it's not worth the customer's time, because if they were paying by hour, then they'd rather go, oh, fuck it. We'll pay for an extra breaker for, for 30 odd quid, get that mm. changed over. Then me spend three hours charging them as artists and would, £80 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> pay for his Tesla car. Yeah. So, I bet Julian can't wait till AFTD's coming he's going to be even more rich <laughs> it is important with your reports to have your audience in mind a bit we do quite a few commercial reports so if I was sending one into someone like Neil as a subcontractor I would be wording it very differently to if I was sending it into a domestic customer who's 80 years old and just knows that when you plug something in it works and I think that's a tricky balance that domestic electricians especially have to contend with because you're given all this terminology and technical detail in an EICR and they just do not have a Scooby-Doo. So you need to kind of write it in a way that they might actually take some action against it. And I've said for quite a long time that I think the domestic EICR document doesn't help achieve that. Oh, it's, no, it it's, it's just, it's about six pages too long to start. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just full of goldygook. Um, I mean, why does uh, little Miss Joan across the street care about what regulation number is breaching? Yeah, exactly. It means nothing well, to them. Absolutely nothing. Literally, when we do it, we work for older people. We don't really do it for older people. It's mainly because they've been scared by their grandson saying that. that you know what I mean? The house would set on fire, whatever. So we'll go around and check stuff. But nine times out of ten, if there is a problem, we'll just say to them, listen, it is bad. But I most of the time, I work for old people. And I've got the, the number, they've got my number through their family, kids, grandkids, whatever, who are my age. I'll ring up, explain the situation, and they can pass the information on. But if there's any, if an urgent, it just sort of gets fixed ASAP, so they're not in mm. any danger. But that's like the rewire did a few videos back, rubber wire everywhere, um, and the only reason it got picked up because they had a new boiler, and the gas man ran two five into an asbestos um, flash pad board with no RCD, and the whole house was fed off a two point five rubber cable that as that was tails two point five mil rubber. Nice. <laughs> the north for everyone. Yeah, I'll, I'll you know what, I, have, I have noticed. I think Mark's been practicing speaking <clears throat> properly. I'm full of cold, so everyone knows southerners sound like they're full of cold all the time because you don't know how to talk mm. proper. So but I've got, I've got a real bad cold. It's not COVID. I'm not going to infect you. You've got, you've got <laughs> Corona. I haven't. I haven't got Definitely Corona. Have. It's your fault for the next lockdown. Oh, well. yeah. Yeah. What's your week been like, Nick? In these um, lockdowns. Mark, what's your what's your week been like? What have you been up to? Uh, it's been okay. We've uh, I've done a, actually done a, a YouTube video I put out of Matthew 
doing some work on um, a job we've started. I think I told oh, yeah, you that job looks interesting. It does. It is going to be a decent job. Obviously, I've got, got a YouTube channel. Yeah, I've got twenty subs, so I'm big time. <laughs> but you know, it's it's basically <laughs> Nick's, Nick Nick puts all Nick puts all his work out onto onto YouTube, and you know that's a really brave thing to do. It is I just so thought, brave. It is. Yeah, it's massive it, respect it, it for is, that. though, Nick. Come on, you've got to... Oh, you, right. you're he's not in... a hero. Uh, oh, no, listen, we all do a little bit of that, and you do put yourself out there. The other day, I started doing some stuff on the AFD Depot, and I thought, oh, I've got to go and get a talk driving now. It's going on YouTube. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, oh, I've got to nip that one in the bud. You know what I mean? I've never used a talk driver in my life. You got, I make sure my guys have got one, but I've never owned one. You know, I've never, yeah. never, ever used one before. When did they start becoming popular in trend? What, about three years ago, two years ago? Two years ago, yeah, two or three years, wasn't it? And I, I've been doing this since I was sixteen and thirty-eight now. I've never, never used one ever. Yeah, I think, like I Rick three. said, a lot of a lot of people realised. I certainly did that. I was maybe over tightening quite a few terminations before that. I was always <laughs> taught in my apprentices to do it VFT, so very fucking tight. And that yeah. was that was just the way we were taught. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was taught like bend it. And try I, it I, much I used it, to be the guy that used to uh, use his impact driver. <laughs> I that guarantee you I guarantee you I, that's one of my pet hates my guys have tried to do that a couple of times I'll spot them I go ballistic I guarantee you Sam is the kind yep. of sparks that does a 3.5 socket screw up with a, with a dry uh, with, a, with an electric driver did you? I will show you what, what what driver I use when we okay. do the tool dash I will go and get it oh have you come prepared for the tool dash have you no but it's upstairs Bundy yeah, yeah I got well, clue. it makes it all better it's alright Tool, tool dash. dash. In about yeah. 10 minutes, we'll do a tool dash. You've got to go get a choice tool, bring it back and give a little talk about it. Yeah, going back to the, U- the YouTube thing. The fact that... <laughs> yeah. I agree. But... They are decent tools. They are nice. Anyone heard from what's his face? Who won the last competition? Beck. Beck. I haven't heard from him. I said get in contact and, and send me your deets and I'll sort, sort it out. Nothing. Guess I'll get the prize as well then. Might want you to keep Ooh. it. Oh, I've got my... Oh, we'll do tool dash. Yeah, I'll wait, I'll wait. I've got something in reach here that's wicked. Let's do tool dash now. Should we do tool dash now? Who's staying? Uh, I'll stay, because I'm out of back and reach. I can reach. Yeah, your tools are all shit, Neil. <coughs> I'll piss off. Right, are we ready? Dash. Three, yeah, two, one, go. Sam's just going to get a donut. Oh, you literally not going to go for a dash then? you got your tools on you, have <laughs> <laughs> Cover that in a minute. So Mark's back for those that are listening. I have a game for chair this week. So we're obviously in his tool store. And Sam is in the smallest shed in the world and he's still not back. So I wonder where he keeps his tools if he's not in the shed. <laughs> he says he's got to go upstairs. Does he have an upstairs in his shed? No, I think so. He wishes he did. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably getting a bollock in for waking the kids up or something about now. Oh, he is. He's not actually in anywhere near enough. <laughs> I had to run upstairs. Right. Who's right. playing first? I brought Sam's lunchbox with me. <laughs> 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 it's not far off. Low uh, carbs. Low carbs. Well, what is, is that? Lighter. That's the the power bank that I use. <sighs> so this is the one they set. It is trash, to be fair, the side. So it's power, though. This isn't a plug. They actually sent me this for free. Was it begin the lockdown? Plan? So I plugged in. <laughs> well, yeah, they will never see this from China, so they have no worries about that. But they, um, they sent me maybe this. they will, bro. Well, the annoying thing is, well, it's not annoying. It's good for me. They they, uh, they sent me this, and then obviously I put it on my videos. And I've used it a lot. So when we do CU changes, we just plug. If there's people still in the house, and most of the time they're working from home at the moment, plug the Wi-Fi and their laptop or whatever back into this, and they can use it all day. And it is meant to be charged batteries after for ages. But I had this, and then I think it was three months later, Nagy did a video on it. Ah, I had it first. Anyway, <laughs> it's really good. So you've got your... So you, your do, you, do you have to give that for the customers to use, the house owners to use, or is it for your stuff? Both. A bit of both. So if, if, if there's no one there and we need um, charge batteries and whatnot, which is quite often because I'm meant to bring them inside, or the uni lights, that sort of stuff. We use it, but if there is, um, we did a few board changes recently with the kids, people's kids are back at school yet, so they wanted the telly on, they wanted the Wi Fi on, that sort of stuff. So we plugged it in all day. That's quite awesome. It's a nice touch, it's actually. It's a nice really, touch. Really, really good, especially with everyone still working from home and having Zoom meetings. I plan it and just say, we'll turn up at nine, we'll turn it off straight away, the internet. 
give it five minutes to reboot and then you'll have the internet all day and they're happy. happy and that'll last all day? It'll last about three days. Oh, that's an awesome bit of kit, isn't it? Would you buy one? Now, you, now, now you've <clears> had one, would you buy one? No, because it costs 1,500 quid. Well, imagine, it would being have that, imagine being that famous, you get sent a 1,500 quid power bank. Boom. But anyway, yeah, I, if it was 700 quid, yeah, worth it. But 1,500 quid is a bit of a piss. That's how rich he is, ladies. 700 quid on making the customer happy. <laughs> Nagy would pay a thousand. Yeah. Artisan would pay 1500, no problem. No, he'd take 1500 quid off you. His, name, <laughs> his name's definitely Nagy as well. It's never Nagy, is it? It's never Nagy. It's Nagy. Um, I've got one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so he's been itching. Look. So, talking of. Uh, talking he's got his breath of... back now, so he can talk. He can go. He wants to go now. Yeah, I can. I can. <laughs> um, talking of wow. doing up sockets and everything really because i'm fat and fat and yeah. lazy is synonymous um this this is my uh does everything then we keep it 12 volt is that is that, is that the serial number that's been scratched off the other side so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the very first uh power tool i ever bought um and i've this, for the listeners on. what is it uh, it's a 12 volt Makita. No, it's a 10.8 volt Makita um, impact driver, and it's a business. And where it's got old and like it's been used for like 15 years, it's um, it's kind of it's kind of weak now. So you can do up free fires; it don't break the socket. You can actually do up the sockets with it. Everything. It's brilliant. That is, the, uh, that, is a, that is my that's one of my triggers. That is, uh, if I see a spark doing up free fires, you know what my trigger is? Well, Your bloody microphone. Yeah, it's mod. Don't start me on that. Yeah, it stresses me out. You know what? I think done it. I'll just press mute up there and it wouldn't, it wouldn't unmute. Weird. It's gone but quiet now. No one else cares. No one else cares. So. It's gone quiet. So still you you just bit, you, no, no, you, you've just gone a bit quiet. We can still hear you. Marco, what have you bought today? I have brought something. I did a little review video on. Ah, that's the weird, the weird uh, level yes, you did. with slidey, slidey adjusters. So if you're setting out your boxes, um, on, on a first fix or even like a uh, surface mount stuff. You don't need to hold back boxes on the wall to mark your, mark your holes before you start drilling. Get them dead yep. straight. Right spaces between, it saves loads of time. I nearly bought one of them a few years ago. A good day Yeah, they're not too expensive either. So we've been, been using that quite a bit. Do you know what you said in your video that really I was like, I'm gutted, I only just learned that. When you drill the holes first, then chase the box out. Do you not do that? No. <laughs> Never yeah. heard of that before. I thought it was genius. Absolutely genius. The amount of times you sit there and you've got the funny angle right where you need your holes are and you can't oh, get yeah. it in there. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, it gets it, gets it the hole in nice and solid. It was actually Matthew who put me onto that. It was my apprentice. Apparently, um, everyone did it like that before, but I only found out maybe five years ago. So you first yeah. all started mugging me off for not doing it and you only just found out five <laughs> years ago. Yeah, of course <laughs> I'm going to mug you off first, I. It's, it's a given. But yeah. <laughs> well, what, it's what we use then. The cool tool things. You see Chris's video the other day about the, the long plastic raw plugs that you can cut down. You see that? Oh, yes. I did see them. Yeah, you poke them in the wall. and uh, That was really them. good. And mm. uh, he, when he came, we did a job together. He came videoed with us the other day. And uh, we ended up adding these to user through run a massive 16 alarm around the outside of his house. And uh, the only real way we could do it properly was through the mortar. And it was an old house. But one side, it was solid. It was like granite. And the other side, it was like, obviously, we'd been weathered hit the front of the house. So we ended up using them. It was absolutely brilliant. Just smashed them a really long 5.5 bit in it, chewed it up all the way, and it was absolutely solid. That was really cool to add. And you got a little secret thing to talk about today, Mark? I have, yes. And I'll show you it now. He's become Courtesy a of our deep friends deep. at Super Rod. <laughs> yes, uh, Super Rod. Uh, giving, it's the right in the right way around to you guys, because it's the wrong way around. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. So they've, they've sent this in and they sent it off to um, various colleges up and down the country, 200 or so. And it's got some nice freebies in there. And they partnered up with CEF and, and Napit. So I'll open it and show you what's inside. Um, Mark, I know what uh, Napit is, but I don't know what Napit is. Oh, shut up, will you? It's getting so old. So old. It's not. It's really not. Is he jiggered? 
Is he chicken? You're going to upset every single northerner. No one's going to listen to you from north of Watford. <laughs> don't, 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 don't change there. Yeah. No. <laughs> so we get one of these. The oh, you've got to do tools. some audio cues for the audio downloads. It's the client, client tools zipper bag. So it's the ballistic nylon bag, uh, 12 and a half inches by seven inches. So that's where you keep your 50 pound notes in, electricians. It is. It is. Right. And some client side cutters. So, Decent. Uh, yep. If you're a non electrician, you can have side cutters, yep. And then. Side oh, no. cutters. There is, there is a bit of stuff actually that's now going to be obsolete. Are you an electrician if you've got side cutters? cutters. You're not, you can't really call yourself an electrician, I've, can you? I've got side cutters, they're just brand new, I've never used them. There's info sheets about the Corrie, well, whatever you say it, that changed no, the no, amendment. No, 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 you've got to say I it. I am not saying it. No, Coriendum, <laughs> whatever it is. But obviously that's probably going to all be changed what, now. What is, that? what is that? What is that? What is that? Was the that Corrie. an info sheet? Or an info yeah, sheet? Info. An info sheet. And uh, Nipit are giving free membership to students. So this He's is sweating now, look. He's I am can't really put me out my stride. So you can get free membership as a student to Napit for all the technical advice. Which respect where respect is due to Napit. That is phenomenal. That, that is, is excellent. Move. Make us alive. And also there's in there the um, Max ZS is for your MCBs and such. And Ooh. your cable ratings. That's a nice little sheet to have. Yeah, yeah. Laminate as well. Nice sturdy construction. Yeah, it is. And they are doing this little deal for the colleges. So they can order 10 of these toolkits and get a free one at the end and in partnership they're doing an apprentice's special tool bag through through cef so if you're an apprentice you can order a, a heavily discounted tool bag from klein by super rod as part of this um this thing they're setting up so That's it's all awesome. so pretty it's good a pretty, it's a pretty nice deal really um everything it, all included it's a nice thing to be sending out yeah i mean that that kit's totally free of charge to the colleges so they sent it out to 200 or so and then the kits that are discounting to the apprentices I think it's around 50% off the actual price on the CEF website that if you're an apprentice, you can buy that half price. And then if you're the college themselves and you want to kit your guys up in, in the test booths and such, you can buy 10 of the kits and you get the 10 uh, next one free. Oh, that's awesome. So what I got to do, um, CEF online, is it or go into the store? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, been launched by Superrod through September. So I think it started on the 1st of September. I'll just find that leaflet. It's in it. What's this one? So the college has been sent out this little sheet mm. and you can either fax it in if you're old fashioned or you can go on to the uh, education support superrod.co.uk and fill in your details and uh, get set up on there. So if you're like, the get I don't think Nick, and this ain't a cuss, Nick, have you ever seen a fax machine? What's I love fax, fax machine? machines. Oh shush, don't even play. <laughs> <laughs> but have you ever seen one in real life? Yeah, my dad used to have one. Yeah. <clears throat> We used to really piss him off because we uh, we just keep photocopying the same thing time and time again, see how, how dark it'd get. Yeah. <laughs> that's called uh, that's that's a, that's a childhood in the north there, just playing with a fax machine. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't he didn't have like a, a Nintendo or PlayStation or anything. He, fax, fax machine. Fax machine. <laughs> it was when my Game Boy was flat. Ooh, so no, my first job on the railways was oh, so about Digging fourteen them. years ago, and that every day. We had to come home, oh, we had day work sheets, and um, fax them to the office every night. God, you're so and that wasn't even that old. That's not even that long ago. It's like, what, 13 to 14 years ago? Yeah, Nick was still at primary school. <laughs> yeah, Literally. That's, that's shit, that is. No, no. <laughs> like, I just started terrible. high school. <laughs> How old are you, Nick? 28. Oh, you're not that young. Well, he's 10 years younger than all three of us. Well, Adam, I, I, Adam's 11 years younger than me. What? How old was you when you started out on YouTube? When did you start doing your videos? last year. Yeah. So uh, 27 years old to be doing that. That's got some balls, mate. So what's good on you? Would you, do, <laughs> would, you do, would, would you go back and do anything differently? What, from the beginning of YouTube? From, from YouTube, do you, ever, do you ever look back and go, oh, I wish I'd done it this way or done it that way? Or... Not giving a shit too much what people think. It got me to start with, I'm not going to lie. Like, wasn't you, uh, everyone warned me what it'd be like, but it's still, you You can't stop thinking about the shit people. I mean, I, I think I've only ever blocked one person and he's, he was a nasty prick. He just kept going and going and going to the point where I was like, you know, you, you could get a thousand likes and 500 comments. You get one arsehole that comments, a shit comment, and you ignore everything else. You just look at that one yeah. negative comment. Mm. And it, it, Proper ate me up, so in the end, I just like blocked him. Um, but 
I think to start with, try and go in with a bit more confidence. Just to start with, we're so new to it. Like mm. I got the confidence to stand up in a room, front, talk to people. That doesn't bother me. But to stick a camera in your face and just go, all right, and then actively like no one's listening, no one's there. It's a bit more weird than the customer was there to start. Like now, I've recorded on customers that I don't mind. They don't care. But I don't know, a little bit more confidence or. That's about it, really. Like that, the whole purpose of YouTube. I've tried so many new different ways, so many new products, because I was so, well, stuck in the, the the same way of something works, and it, I got paid at the end. I would just say, "Hey, the board, do it this way, or chase this way, or pick boards up this way." And I've picked up so many like t- little things from other people's videos, what people have commented on my videos, saying, obviously, suppliers and approaching me and trying all their new stuff. So. It's just expanded my knowledge of being an electrician and it's helped me be a better electrician, 100%. Yeah, I've said this before. With in terms of, I used to, um, when I started um, signing on to the forums back in the day, that is when I started really progressing my knowledge because you get, when you grow up, it's like without social media, we, we grew up, all us three, obviously not Nick, was, there was no social media when I was learning. There was no, I, I think no. I got my first, I think I got my first mobile when I was an apprentice. Uh, they weren't even a thing when I was at school. And um, listen, if you so wanted you only, to you know anything learned, hang on. back in the day, if you wanted to know anything back in the day, you had to go to the library, you had to get on the bus <laughs> uh, with your bus pass, go down to the library, get a library card that usually took a week because you had to go home, get it signed, and all that, get your doctor yeah. to sign it, and everything. And they wouldn't let you have the book the first day you joined, so you had to go back. I like, had to plan things like a week in advance. Yes, yes, because you, you couldn't join and get a book the same day. You had to join, go away, come back a different day. Yes. Oh, yes. Know. Can you imagine? This is the thing. So we never had that sort of thing. So in terms of uh, join the four, you only learn what the direct influence of around you, actual physical people told you. And all of a sudden you, you thought that was the way. And then when you got this yeah. internet and the forums, you think, Oh my God, I've been doing it shit. Oh yeah. my God, this is how this person does it. That's it. And then the, the wealth of knowledge that you absorbed from, from, from having access to all this information. I mean, the youngsters of today, they don't realise how lucky they've got it. They've got, they've got the, yeah. the utmost information at the tip of their fingers. It's phenomenal, really. It's phenomenal. I said this when I started college. Like, the YouTube mm. Sparks wasn't there. The YouTube was only... It was on your phone, but you barely ever went on it because it ate your data up. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, it was the way. And But now, it's like, if Adam wants to know anything about any electrical stuff, Obviously, reach out to everyone that we know, or YouTube, or Instagram, or Twitter, or anything, and you can get an answer within five seconds mm. from a real person, not just Google. So. Yeah, and, and where you and Dave, are, I think, do it right, and others don't, won't name them. You, you engage back, so you mm. you put something out there, you ask for advice, but then you engage back with the with the people that are, that are sort of throwing information backwards and forwards. Other people, they put a question out there, get a load of answers, and then they even come back and say thank you or debate and all that. Mm. I just think it's a bit rude, but. Uh, I think that's something that you and Dave do really well with social media. You engage, engage with the followers it, and the people it, it, that are it, interested it, in your story. Yeah, the problem is, I mean, I, I've said to Sam, I've got hundreds of unread or unlit, unmarked messages on Instagram <laughs> because I don't get the time. If I put one thing out on like my story, I could have 60, 70 replies off one thing and then obviously get YouTube on top and my social... Yeah. No. Oh, so, so oh yeah, oh, so all these zoos, but it uh, it is it is difficult, and sometimes I, I don't want to come across rude to people. I just don't have time to go through everyone's messages. Yeah, if people understand, they've got to understand, and they yeah, so, it's good though, the whole social media thing, definitely. I mean, you did it today for me, Neil. I was asking you about some meters. You got you out of shit again. Well, you actually helped me get what could be quite a nice little job. So, see, uh, see? You know, yeah. That, no that finders for you either. No, exactly. So, you know, it's, it's all good, isn't it? People are helping each other. That's the important part. What I will say is a, a lot of people approach social media in the, wrong, in the wrong way. It is a, a positive platform. It's like anything in life. You make it, what, you make it whatever yeah. you want it to be. Yeah. So we chose to make it positive for all of us. That's where Monday Club come from. Like Mark, Mark wanted to like jump in with EDTE. He got invited on. It's no big deal. And, and the whole thing was, the whole thing for, for, for me with social media, it's just been a positive experience in the last year or so. Certainly mm. with the podcast, everything's been positive. I don't really, I don't really know about all this negativity because I just don't deal with it. I see it, out, like there. it. <laughs> I see it out there a lot. But the thing is, I'm, I'm not the sort of person that will just collect followers or connections. 
I will look and go, okay, are you are you the industry that I want to work with? Are you the sort of person I want to speak to on my timeline? I don't just go, yes, 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 yes. I think lots of people do go, yes, 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 yes. And then they moan about who they who who what their timeline is filled up with. I thought, well, you, you you're your own natural screening for that and you're not providing this screen to the people in your inner circle you don't just go into a pub and invite 50 people closest people go, yeah i'll come in because your bands <laughs> have three or four pricks there aren't you you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the yeah. same thing and, and sometimes we just i think people just want to collect numbers and all that sort of stuff and then but what i will say is still. what i will say is i've been told my bike riding's no good i'm a fat onion i cut my hair with my knife and uh, yeah, I'm having a bit. And, and Neil's got the longest head in the world. I feel a bit of a prick now because I got a bit of stick about Apprentice one to one earlier this week. But having heard, Nick say, having heard Nick say that people offered to kill him, I was getting a bit upset over nothing. Someone questioned well, you, my I mean, you, have, you, you, you have milked this, this big time this week, Mick. Uh, Mark, do you want to go there then? Because <laughs> I, I, no, I was no, really not, shocked. Not, I was really shocked by that comment. Things. And um, everyone said, I honestly thought that wouldn't happen in this case. I didn't think it, people would go there. I don't know if you've seen it, Nick, on LinkedIn. So someone accused Mark of um, just doing the apprentice one-to-one -one thing for likes and, and pats on the back. And it was such a... I was it's so way, disappointed to read it. I was just like... Following. <laughs> um, I am... Um, um, all the things to do to get followers, like... Spend up the effort, midnight. Yeah, the effort you'd have to go to. Christ, you might as well just go only fans. Do you know what I mean? No, it was stupid. I actually got quite upset over it, and it's ridiculous, really. I, I thought the other day that, you know, all the positive stuff that comes through social media, I'm letting this bother me more than it should. I don't so, know why I said it, so sorry. Yeah. To it. Oh, Christ, you say far worse than that. I should have blocked you about six months yeah. ago. Well, maybe yeah. a year ago. Six months ago. Wait, wait, six months ago or ago? Oh, shut yeah. up. <laughs> like, just ignore it. Like I've done it for a year now, and, and you do get just shit constantly and if you don't know them like why does your opinion matter to me like i don't give a shit who you are or what you do so if i don't if you, if you don't know me personally to have an opinion then mm. fuck off. only losers put negative things on people's videos sit yeah only losers. I, 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 I think um i think sam said it quite well and it's something i've hooked on to is that i look around at what i'm doing right now in the electrical industry and look at my life and i go the electrical industry has created everything for me. My friends, my social interactions, my business, my fat, my house, my family. The electrical industry has given me everything. The electrical industry has given me everything. I'm really grateful for it. It's a fucking excellent industry. I love it. You know, and when I, when I see people cussing it, that I feel like going, just, just take your negativity elsewhere, man. I love this industry. Yeah, it's got its faults. What industry ain't got its faults, but... Definitely not to the same perspective as some people make out. I mean, why would you do a job that makes you so fucking miserable? I don't get it. <laughs> can't do another Good job. Point. Good point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, if you don't like it, do something to change your life. It's, it, it shouldn't be. <clears throat> I'm unhappy with my job. There's obviously something deeper rooted than that. If you're not happy, change change your, your lifestyle, change what you do, change your perspective on how you do things. Mm. That's the way forward. I'm a big believer in that. I, like. Yes, I'm at the lowest part of the the the, uh, the technical aspect of the electrical industry, but look what it's true. given me. Look, yes, it is true. I know, fucking the untechnical one, but look what it's given me. I live by the coast in a nice house. I feed my family. I've, you know, I've got lots of nice things, and I have a laugh with my mates on a podcast on a Monday um, about the electrical industry. Mate, life's good. Mm. The electrical industry's done good by me. Yeah, I love it. And the purpose of all this as well is people are listening and, and, and learning from it from what we say. So you're putting back in just from having a laugh with your mate. No one's learning then, anything from me. Not, yeah, they're not from you, but the they're all going up the screen. How do I not be like a person? I've just watch yeah. it, so I don't be like him. <laughs> I would do the exact opposite that Sam does all, every week. <laughs> yes, do that. Everyone's off their bikes now. They're going, nah, if he's bike riding, <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fat onion. Listen. Right, that's it. You're barred from the Fat Boy Bike Club. You're barred. Nick's never allowed in it. Mark's definitely in it. He's got pee top and everything. Yeah, Mark can be in it because he don't mock my bike riding. But let's let's have it straight. The Fat Boy Bike Club is now a thing, and you can't be in it. Okay, that's perfectly <laughs> fine. That's perfectly fine. I'll live with that. Fat Boy Bike Club, hit me up. 
I was listening to your uh, your Nick's. Was it the first podcast you've done here? Was you done? You only done one before, haven't you? We've well, got the last episode bikes. that we did. You started talking about bikes forever. I was falling asleep while you talking about oh, motorbikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the one we did in lockdown. No, no, no. Before that, the first one we did with Rick. Oh yeah, yeah. You and him started boring us to death about rugby, and I wanted to just talk about motorbikes, but you've gone off them. I haven't gone off them. I, I stopped riding them because my dad died. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> my dad used to be a massive biker, and the only reason I started riding because my dad. So we used to go out most weekends, and obviously once he passed away, we we had to sell his bikes, and it just oh. lost all interest in it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, thanks for that, Sam. <laughs> Dickhead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stole so off like, the Sam yeah. Maybe we'll let you in the honorary Fat Boy Bike Club. No, Mark. So, uh, Mark, yes. is uh, young Matthew around? Because we've got to do a competition. I uh, know. I'll, mm. I'll get him now. I'll just uh, I'll grab him. So, what we're we, what we going to guess here then between us? I'm going to go for 26. I didn't. What well, I've obviously missed this bit. What did we do? <clears throat> last week, done a, watching so to the someone end. Didn't watch last week, did they? <laughs> someone well, didn't watch the, this morning's I episode. I watch you. I watched today's. I watch you on the way to pick Adam up, so I only get to a point where I can't finish it. You know what I mean? So we're giving away this. This is a oh, general nice. titanium series TCL dash one XR red crossline laser package, seven year warranty. Listen, it is decent. I have looked at uh, it. It is decent. It's got a decent tripod and it's all right. This is For free. Matthew. Stop moaning. Hello, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> the dog's just walked in. Where he is? He's on his way. It's on his way. Way or where? Here he is. So, so the competition is we've got a guess. Hello, Matthew. How you doing, mate? Hi, mate. You're all right. He can't. He's just. Oh, really. He can't hear you. Can't hear anyone. <laughs> Nick's literally his hero, so he's gone bright red. <laughs> Uh, well, done, crush, well, done, well done, Dad, for embarrassing him. Jesus. He loves him. He listens to everything he does. So. <laughs> right, so the competition, we've got a guess. Or, no, we haven't got a guess. Uh, the listeners or viewers have got a guess what young That's... Matthew, young but very tall Matthew, <laughs> is going to get with it's three tall, darts. Have you got, what's, what's the distance he's going to stand away? Is there a line on the floor? Uh, yeah, he is. So he's proper, got a professional proper... oppie. Hockey down there, so he's right at the professional length. Okay. I will get 180 because that's boring. You're going to get 180. Ooh, it's boring. Yeah. No, that's boring, so. Go on then, let's see it. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's coming in the bar, it's a start. Has he ever thrown a dart before? No, I didn't. <laughs> All right, so we've got a treble 14 and a 20, so I'd like Sam to do the maths on that. <laughs> Come on, Why Sam. Why you got to do it? Why? Why? I don't know. 62? I don't know. 62, 63, something like that. <laughs> don't know. Right. Turn that into Ohm's Law. <laughs> <laughs> it's 62. <laughs> there you go. I was right. No, I was right, and you said it's second. So he's got 62. That's pretty impressive, Matthew. Matthew. You can go, you can go away now. See you later. No, no, no. no Matthew, no, stay. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Neil, will not you? Do you want him to talk to you? I'll yeah, put, put the headphones on. on. Right. There you go, Matthew. Oh, sorry, Coach. Hello, Matthew. Hi, mate. Hi. Hi. All right. He... Oh. Hold on, hold on. Go on, go on. Say, go. Say go. Go. Oh. 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 <laughs> What's it like working for you, old man? Um, I can't say anything too bad or I'll sack me. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew, ask your dad why he's wearing a PE top. Why are you wearing a PE top? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Start mocking your accent. <laughs> you already have. Ask Sam if you can be in the Fat Boy Bike Club. No, <laughs> uh, you can't. He's too skinny. Fat Boy Bike Club, not for you. Not for you, mate. You could be in the in the Long Boy basketball team. <laughs> I reckon you might have Good contended mate. for the world's biggest head. I think you might beat my measurement. Have you got a tape measure? Get the tape measure. Get the tape measure right now. Have you got a tape measure to measure my head? <laughs> no, there's no tape. Well, could use the weird spirit level. Has he got, has he got measurements on it? Uh, it does have measurements. But you've got no prop. You've got put the headline back, though. Put the headline back. So for those Actually, listening, we're using actually. a tape measure. Uh, we're using right. a spirit level to work out the length of... <laughs> he's maybe 310 mil. I think he's got a massive head look. Yes! Yes! Are you measuring my nose? 
Nose. Nose. <laughs> What's a nose? Two hundred eighty. Two hundred eighty. Two hundred eighty mil. That's massive. Two hundred eighty mil. Oh. Certainly not got brains in it. <laughs> and Matthew, how tall are you? Uh, six five. Fucking yeah, hell! That's all the postman. I'm six <laughs> three. Fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ! Six foot. Sam's uh, Sam looks like he's melted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating gravy. Gravy. You proud of your dad? He's doing a good job, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing a good job. Has he trained you well? Uh, I'd like to think so. <laughs> think so? You've got an even worse northern accent than your old yeah, man. I know. I know because because we haven't mocked him enough. He's not trying to. He's not trying to curb it. We're gonna have to put the subtitles on. This the, is on not the grill. <laughs> this is not grill. My staff, you bitches. I can hear you slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we might just replace you with Matthew. I think he, I think you're bringing more listeners. Yeah, yeah. Got a better hairstyle, definitely. Well, he's got oh. he's got basically a Bundy hairstyle, hasn't he? Just a bit more volume. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I've been wearing a hat all day. I'm saying, okay. So we've got What's your hat smell like? <laughs> <laughs> what is he saying? I don't like the giggling. <laughs> Fausty <laughs> is what it is. Um, have you measured the length of your dad's forehead? Yeah, I heard that. Well, <laughs> it takes Mark ages to wash his face. <laughs> <laughs> he polishes it. I'm just distinguished. That's all. I'm nearly forty. <laughs> it's never oh. seen so long to take this wash your face with my life. <laughs> oh, keeps going. It keeps going. He don't know whether he's washing his face or his hair. <laughs> <laughs> he don't know whether to use soap, soap or shampoo. <laughs> I'm not taking Monday Club to be tech the piss out of my art club. <laughs> oh dear. Go on, put your old man back on. Really nice to meet you, uh, Matthew. Yeah, Good sport day, mate. mate. See ya. Ta da. <laughs> oh, cheers. Cheers, been you assholes. Yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> Poor old Mark. We're gonna get we're gonna get moaned at for bullying. Uh, uh you are. Terrible. Bastards. <laughs> Mark will go yeah. straight onto his uh, own WhatsApp group. Really. Anyway, he got 62, so that's 62. the important thing. 62. Did anyone get 62? I think there was, a, there was a thing this morning. I'm sure there was. There was a few guesses, but I don't think anything near that. No, I don't think there was. Uh, let's have a look. So, obviously, for those that are listening and watching, so we record tonight, but the, the episode with the competition was only uh, released this morning. So we will, it's going to be two weeks from today. Oh, no. It's going to be, you're watching this next week. So, yeah, the winner will be announced next week. God, that's hard work, that is. Mate, you pulls that right up. Where's Rick when we need him? It's What's so the prize? The sound. What? What's the prize? Uh, have done that when you, when missed you, that, bro. you missed that, You missed that. We've got, so the closest one, are, are we going to go to the closest one? Yeah, close. Yeah, always closest one, and only one bet, obviously. Oh, Jack Morris, 60. Oh, that's what I was looking for earlier. Jack Morris, 60. So, Jack Morris, you need to get in contact with one of us. No, or... no, 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 no. Next week we announce the winner, because he's only had half a day's worth of voting. But we've just done the throw. Yeah, no, but this is released next week. We don't know the winner is yet till next week. So when you've watched this, when you've watched this, the competition is closed. Next week we'll announce the winner because we're a week behind. Oh, okay. I'm right, well, and I. At the moment, we are ahead. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment, Jack Morris is the closest <laughs> with sixty, so it's unlikely anyone's going to beat that. You never know. I'm going to message saying sixty-two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, no, you're banned. You're you're excluded. Um. Yeah, any influence is excluded from our com- from our competitions going forward. I think that's fair. Very yeah, good show. <clears throat> On that note, we got anything else to add for this week? Not myself. No. No. We call it a day. Then, check we? out our YouTube channel. It's now oh, been sexied up by myself. Every week, forget like, subscribe. No one's listening. I tell you what. I tell you what I do when I when I record next. I'll um. Can you like shout out to come watch and put a link in it? That'll oh, fa- thanks for throwing us a bone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can enter the competition now. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I've got a plan. What about this? Why don't we do the very first uh, swap cast? And you can put this out on your channel as well. 
You want to put this out on my channel? <laughs> I'm just saying, we're doing you a favour. It's not asking about what, is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's no, the score with no. swearing then? What? What is that the same personally you don't you don't like on your channel? Or? No, it messes with the algorithms, I told you. Yeah, so I used to swear the first like twenty videos, every now and then there'd be a fuck or a shit or a bollocks or whatever. Mm. When there was a plumber there around anyway, wankers. <laughs> and um I, I think it's when I spoke to Gannis of Tresham and he said to me, like, if you want your audience to grow, you want to grow quicker, stop swearing, because YouTube will cut that shit out and you're you growing. So I'm a potty mouth in real life, but on YouTube, I really, really try not to. Because obviously, if people are watching the videos with next to the kids or wife on telly and whatnot, and you've got yeah. like, the likes of Dave saying every other word <clears> in the sun, they ain't going to watch it. So. Yeah, no, I think, I think me and Sam sort of spoke about this earlier. And uh, I was the opinion, right I don't again. really want to change what we're doing. But if we can be polite at the same time, just unnecessary, yeah, don't swear it, and try and wipe the it back. I noticed the way, while talking about algorithms, Bunny swore about 18 times during that second. Yeah, <laughs> <I'll, I'll laughs> <I'm good. laughs> He's literally pushed us to the bottom of every algorithm YouTube will ever throw out. Ah, fucking bollocks, shit one. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's actually a little bit internally triggering right now. He's actually like... He's want actually prob- he wanted me to cut yeah. swear words out earlier. He's like, no, we've got to cut them out, we've got to cut them out. And I, I'm just saying, like, I've been doing my research, I've been looking at YouTube, and, and I've found out that that's a problem, and, and you're not listening. But it's fine. Sam, if you want any hints or tips about YouTube, you can always ask me, mate. It's no problem at all. No, Sam, so, know, Sam, so good at YouTube, you know, actually asked you to do a swap cast with us. Look at the state, look at the state of the swear words on yeah. this. That's <laughs> how on point Sam is. <laughs> but listen, no, listen. If I'm going to ask anyone, I'm going to ask Jordan from Artisan. Because he knows how to do a YouTube channel. Ooh, that's fair. That's, a, that's fair. He's I'm not going. taking that bit. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> you, you have already gone there a little bit, haven't you? In, in yeah. Terms, yeah no. Internally, he's already got a little bit. Oh. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing some I like content. I like, I like his content. Double your, double your subs? He's doubled your subs in no, six months? Hasn't. No, he's on 40,000, isn't he? No, he's not. No, he's not. I'm not going to rise to it. He's only two. No one asks Artisan what his hat smells like. <laughs> no. <laughs> Probably smell. <laughs> Do you know what he says? Money, bitches. <laughs> yeah. I was right. right. He's like, like, like okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just Tesla. Tesla. That's what he uses to watch his Tesla with 50 notes. Yeah. Uh, I think he's got to curb the old um, EV charging videos. It's just like overdrive at the moment, EV charging videos. But seems to be killing it, I think, as a business, doing, a, doing obviously a lot of EV charges. And he actually says something really good on one of his videos days. Like some, a lot of sparks, here's a bit of advice, really. A lot of sparks nowadays, they're sort of going, oh, I don't do EV chargers. And it's such a, such a dumb business move. It's like someone, it's like someone saying, I don't do de- uh, consumer units. It's like the future yeah. is EV well, charging, isn't it? I'm, a, I'm actually in contact with someone. It's my neighbour. Uh, did a video out and he was going to have the Tesla um, battery packs fitted inside the house. Come over the, the power Tesla. wall, too. Yeah, so but he went against it and now he's going with a different company. I can't remember what it's called, but I've, I've actually got a meeting at some point at his house. So the director's coming out and he's having, but there's only 600 or whatever fit at the moment, but they, it's going to be booming at some point. So obviously, economy seven <clears> or that sort of thing, tariff charging your batteries overnight and then putting it back into the system during the day. It's mm-hmm. going to boom at some point, and uh, I'm going to sort of try and get on that because I'd be the only spark around here that does that. So, yeah, I'll be looking at a lot niche. of that for my ass. But the um, that's the person so- to talk to, trust me. There is, um, I lost myself three months of my life into that life, honestly. Mm-hmm. I designed my house system, started off with a system, spent three months looking at other systems, designed about 17 other systems, and started off with the first one I started off with. <laughs> honestly, it's such a rabbit hole, but it's awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's quite topical because. Amendment 2 has got a new Section 8 in it, um, which will be the prosumer section. So it's looking to capture that market where the consumer is going to start supplying the grid energy yeah. through solar. So it's, the future. it's the future, <clears throat> definitely. Mm. Well, that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, right. let's wrap it up. Thanks. See you later, everyone. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Mark. Bye-bye. See you later.